Greetings and welcome to the first edition of the Urban Report. I'm Robert Long and with me tonight is a uh, noted uh, political analyst and community man about town, Earl Afari Hutchinson. And uh, classing the table up is Aaron <laughs> Aubrey Kaplan, uh, a, a well-known freelance journalist who appears regularly in the pages of the Los Angeles Times and on its uh, uh, blogs. Uh, I always have trouble with that word because I don't know what a blog <laughs> is. And tonight we're going to talk about um, an interesting week that was. A couple of uh, interesting things happened as I was getting on the plane in uh, Washington yesterday. You know, I see the headline about what a what a nasty little kid uh, Romney was. Mm -hmm. And people were still buzzing about this uh, alleged transformation of President Obama mm -hmm. uh, on the same-sex marriage issue. What do you make of this? Is this some kind of apocalypse? <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> well, the president said he was evolving, and so did he evolve. But um, as we well know, you can have your sentiments, you can have your beliefs, you can have your moral code, but at the end of the day, politics trumps a lot of things. So now there's two questions that have come up over and over again. Joe Biden was kind of the stalking horse. Joe Biden essentially made a comment, I support uh, gay marriage, same-sex marriage. So now the president's in a position now. You've got your vice president that essentially has come out publicly and said, I support same-sex well, marriage. Well, he said he didn't have any trouble. Well, uh, but he was pretty, that's the same as an endorsement. You know, no one and no public official is allowed to have a personal opinion. Anything, and I mean anything you say once you're a public official becomes part of the public record. It just comes with the turf. And if you're a vice president, whatever you have to say is irrelevant, except for Joe Biden. Right. Well, in this case, it was very relevant because it set the stage. So it set the stage for what Obama had to do. And essentially, it was never a question of when. It was a question of whether. It was really a question of at what point in time. Mm -hmm. And so we knew he was going to make the endorsement because he's been inching up to that in many, many ways over time. So the only really question which brings me to the second point about timing of it. Now, many people say, you know, why are you doing this right now? At this point in time, the election's beginning to heat up. We already have a GOP candidate, even though we have to say presumptive, but he's a GOP candidate, and I knew he would be all along. There was never any doubt in my mind, mm -hmm. going back a year, because he had the stamp of the, the, the GOP party imprimatur, higher-ups. But the other thing is, um, why not now? Why not make the statement now? Why not come out now? We have to be realistic in politics. We already know the country's divided right down the middle. Every poll I've seen has shown one thing. Half think they're supportive of gay marriage, half are opposed to it. Well, that's mm -hmm. a slight majority that supports well, and there, it. Well, but there's, there's a silent majority, maybe. Well, before but, you get too far down this road, uh, let me just ask Aaron if you think Joe Biden was acting independently? Was he this a conscious act on his part mm -hmm. or just his famous mouth? You know, people have been discussing that, but I kind of agree with Earl. I think Joe Biden, even though he's known for Forced. talking off the top of his yeah. head, um, this becomes policy. I mean, he, his opinion, particularly on something like this. Well, would he, would, would he consciously I think, I think he would have force to know, his boss into a corner you know, like the, that? The, 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 the only question is whether he planned, whether it was planned or not. And I, I tend to think it, it was. It just seems to me not like an oh, by the way kind of statement. Um, and so... Uh, so you, you think there was some thinking behind it? I think it, there was some thinking behind it. And of course, and you know... And was the president part of that thinking? Or was this done I, to I, him? <laughs> hard, it's hard to imagine think. if it was planned that Obama didn't know because, of course, this is his vice That'd president. That would be a pretty gutty thing for Joe Biden to do. And, you know. Yeah, it could be that it was planned at some point and Biden just decided to come out with it, excuse right. the phrase, uh, on that day, and uh, that might have been the surprise. All right, well, enough. No, let's go on back down the road to the well, timing then, issue. Okay, but I think it's important to the question you're asking, Aaron. It was orchestrated. Vice president doesn't make policy. Nobody in his cabinet makes policy. They don't even make opinions without the president essentially giving the green light. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. You know, that hasn't worked that way in, in two decades in Washington, D.C. So essentially, this was orchestrated. 
Joe Biden was a stalking horse, and then the president was going to come behind. You had the North Carolina vote. Everybody knew that this was going to be overwhelmingly mm. in North Carolina, that essentially the vote would be to support the ban. Everyone knew that. That was already in. So now you got Biden a couple of days before the North Carolina vote, and then you have something else, too. You have the president coming to L.A. to a major fundraiser in this city at George Clooney's house. You have to understand, too, when you're talking about gays, gay marriage, any gay issues, and you're coming to Hollywood, and you're coming with your hand out for big bucks, and he's going to need every penny of it, you better be very clear on this issue. Because you got to remember, for three years, gay civil rights groups, gay activists have harassed, have hectored, have pounded Obama. You must come out and endorse gay marriage. This is not new. So all of these things are coming together. The president had nothing to lose here. Those in North Carolina that support gay marriage, they're not going to vote for him anyway. Mm. The Christian evangelicals, the ultra-conservatives, um, and certainly the Tea Party leaders and followers, they're not going to vote for him anyway. That only leaves black people. Well, possibly. Well, uh, before we move on to that, let's capture this moment. Um, you're saying that uh, Mr. Obama has evolved into a very cynical and manipulative president. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying simply... Or you have evolved into a cynical... <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Because <laughs> <laughs> this was a pretty cynical... Well, wait a minute. Minute. Not person, <laughs> as long as you put the caveat, analyst. I analyst. like that. Analyst. Analyst, yeah, because analysts should be We're cynical. We're all romantics at this uh, time. But no, analysts should be cynical. It's just the nature mm -hmm. of it. But they should also be objective, too, and look at all of the signs of demographics and, and all of the numbers, and that's what we do. And should the president do the same? President, um, he is a top analyst. He's looking at the numbers, but he's looking at much more. He's looking at the political consequence of those numbers, too. So it's really not cynicism to make that call on the part of the president. Just two things came together, his heart and the political moment. Mm -hmm. They came together at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. no, In fact, I it's agree. a good thing. So yeah. you're talking real politics, yeah. uh, and you would agree that, now, is this an evolution? Is Mr. Obama getting smarter about this being president stuff? Probably. I would agree there was a very good, nice way of putting it. The heart, his heart and the political moment came together. Yeah. And because I, I, I can't prove this, but I just always believe that Obama uh, was sympathetic to the same-sex marriage issue, but he just felt he could not, couldn't, you know, couldn't uh, uh, come well, out that, on that coincided with his uh, all things to all men phase, didn't right. it? Where I he was going to bring I, I everyone together. And, right, from that. And Bill Clinton keeps saying, punch him out. <laughs> right. These guys aren't going to play fair. Right. <laughs> Step on them now, break their necks. Yeah. And Obama what thinks is he can to me, manage it. Yeah, what is interesting interesting to me is that Obama uh, years ago you know, expressed his sympathy and empathy for the cause but said the thing that held him back was his Christian faith. This time he, I guess maybe perhaps this part did evolve a little bit because mm -hmm. he said that you know he searched the soul or whatever and decided this Christian faith that, that they were, it was consonant with the support of same-sex marriage, you know, equality for all people, all that kind of stuff. So that's a bit, you know, um, uh, not radical but it's, it's uh, it may, it may, it may suggest some evolution there for him. Right. Well, Bob is going to call me cynical again on this. <laughs> no, I, think I said, but no, because of what analyst. I'm going to say next. <laughs> well, you may and, be. And just to kind of yeah. move ahead a little bit with that thread, mm. he also did something else too. Mm -hmm. Okay, when, since now we're talking about Christians and their belief, and there's all kind of Christians and all kind of beliefs. Right. Sure. The Bible was interpreted and misinterpreted every which way mm -hmm. to suit certain ends. Always has been. But you got to remember something, polls, and I'm, I'm big on numbers. People say, oh, you keep talking about polls, but I, but I have to do that because they're a bellwether rather than just talking off the top of your head. Polls are showing one thing very clearly, and the president looked at those polls. You have now a sea change over the last three or four years among African-American Christian evangelicals. Three years ago, overwhelmingly, the number was saying, we don't support gay marriage. However, now polls are showing there's a softening there's now, because times are changing, you know, things change, nothing stays the same. People's attitudes are evolving. I talked to so many Christian fundamentalists, African Americans, in recent, e well, recent years, but mm -hmm. recent days, and, and I, I tell you, I'm surprised at what they're saying. Mm. They're saying things they wouldn't have said a year, certainly not two or three years ago. They're saying now, even though we have our personal concerns and reservations about it, 
we still, if someone, if this is their practice, namely their preference, who are we to say? So many of them now have developed not, not support, but at least a softening around the edges to the point where there's tolerance. I, I think the president. Yeah. I think the president saw that. Yeah. Also, well, I would you're add. also saying you're also saying that uh, maybe the electorate is evolving. They are. Mm. There's no question about it. Maybe yeah. faster. The than majority the, now the support. Politicians. The majority now support same-sex marriage by a narrow margin. The majority of, of Americans of America. across sure. the board. Right. Sure. Let's take a little side trip, mm -hmm. and we're talking about it, the evolving uh, electorate, France and Greece. The other main event. That is a big side trip. Yeah. <laughs> More than no, side trip. no but, it, but it's an electorate <laughs> saying, uh, re rejecting the, the policies of the elite, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that austerity is the way out of uh, uh, recession. Right. And they're saying to hell with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and France was certainly on that axis. Sarkozy was playing Germany's game. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Greeks, I can understand doing it just because they're Greek, but the, the French to throw a president out uh, and br bring a, a moderate in, he's described as uh, socialist, a a socialist yeah. but a moderate yeah. socialist, not, you know, that's not radical in Europe. Um, Would be here. Have they moved ahead here. of their leaders? Right. And is the same thing happening here? Right. Let's see if we can tie all that up. Mm. Is uh, Europe teaching us anything about ourselves? Or yeah, should it? We, we always like not to think so, that you know, Europe is Europe and uh, has its, does its own thing. But you know, it's very interesting. You know, they, Austerity is really kind of a European concept. We have it going on here, though. Austerity. And a Republican concept. Oh, Republican sure. Republican. I mean, cutting yeah. public services. As long as it doesn't affect it. Yeah, we just call it belt tightening, yeah. um, or everybody mm. has to, you know. Or deficit. Deficit reduction. Deficit reduction. <laughs> right. But it's the same thing. People are being told, you know, it's kind of like related in my mind to the whole, you know, shock and all. We got to, we got to do this. We're all going to go down. So we must, we all must do this. It's not working here either. It never has worked. Has it, it never has worked. Um, the p people here are not as um, politically um, uh, active as folks mm. over there. We are not. We don't vote people out mm. for preaching austerity because we we have it all mixed up with the American way of, I don't know, democracy, we've got well, it. Well, we also print our own money. We're that's not right. part of the that's Eurozone. That's right. true, that's Which true. Is, but, I think, but I think that you're right, what you said a minute ago is right, austerity doesn't work here either. I, keep, I hear more and more economists, you know, on both sides of the political, you know, uh, aisle saying, you know, when, when comedy's like this, you, gotta, you, you don't, you actually don't uh, uh, cut government. You, you have to put money into the economy. And, and it's, you know, and I keep hearing more people say, you know, they, we've done this before. You know, we've had depressions. We know what to do. We're just not doing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that more and more. And economists say, hey, you know, the math. Right. Right. We, we've seen the numbers. In some ways, it's not a political issue. It, it's an economic. It has issue. been politicized. Of course. And, and we're very good at that. And, yeah. and, and so we hijack. Uh, we hijack and so, so was Sarkozy. And he's gone. And he's gone. Now, uh, that leads me to ask. Uh, both of you, because I, I've just been baffled by this. Why the thumb-sucking disappointment over Obama in so many quarters? What happened? From what who? did he do? From who? Would you say so many People quarters? who supported him. You mean the supporters? Supporters. Okay. Uh, just a, a wave of... No. Thumb-sucking. <laughs> no, no, they're happy as well, clams. Yeah. But, you know, why am I hearing... Uh, you know, and I've wondered this for the last couple of years. Where did this... Um, uh, ennui, uh, uh, turning into disappointment, uh, turning into, oh, whining. screw it, I'm not whining, mm -hmm. thumb sucking. Uh, why should I even participate? Well, it's two things. One, there were, you have to go back to 2008, actually even 2007. Mm -hmm. When he announced his candidacy, there was a, um, an expectation that this is going to be, or he's going to be a different kind of politician. In fact, he's not even going to be a politician. And he's going to be a citizen uh, advocate that just happens to be running for a political office. If you look at his early platform, I mean, it was pretty, it was almost a populist platform in just about every area across the board, education, mm -hmm. health, I mean, uh, the economy, jobs, and so forth, mm -hmm. civil rights, civil liberties, you name it. But then something happens with politicians as they get closer to victory, and that's the ancient thing, 
three, the GOP and we see with Romney, they run to the right and then they move to the center. Democrats, they run to the left and then they move to the center as they get closer to the possibility of victory. But at the same time, millions of people bought into the expectation. Sure. Many of people bought into the original platform. You're going to have what? A single payer health care system. You're going to have universal health care. You're going to have public education that protects all the unions, teachers, no charter schools, none of that. You're going to have a full throated press against the death penalty criminal justice system reform. You're going to have, you're going to go all out. Environmental Climate protection, change. you're going to change that. We can go on and on and on. Green economy. These were the things that were promised. These were the things that people bought into and they bought into something else. We're sick to death of Bush. We're sick to death of this GOP, this sex, this corruption, this scandal, two wars, devastating the economy. We're sick to death of that. We want change. But once you get in the White House, there's something that happens. And the something is very simple. All the things you can say on the campaign trail, all the promises you make, once you bump up against what? The military, the defense establishment, once mm. you bump up against a, a lot of recalcitrant large buildings yeah. in Washington, once yeah. you bump up against the lobbyists, oh, the yeah. corporations, and this is just goes on Why and on. Why isn't anyone mad at them? Well, they are. That's a good question. But they didn't make promises. No, no. But, but, but they didn't make the promises. Mm. He did. Right. And they put their. And they, they believe that he was able to. Well, yeah, nobody elected had that. superpowers. No, nobody he elected Jamie Dimon. Superhero. You know, <laughs> that's J.P. Morgan. Right. You well, get what you what get with him. Right. right. I, with Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> right. A two billion dollar yeah. uh, loss bet. Yeah, and I think I, just and then nobody cared. Right. Well, I don't know. So were we expecting a superhero type we were of president? You were. We were expecting a Hollywood like, president. Yeah. I think that I think I think Earl's right. I think the expectation. Trump reality. It was very difficult not to expect something different. Well, first of all, he's the first black president. Now, that's just symbolic, but it's a huge symbol. It symbolized whatever his politics are, he carries with him this idea that we're going to get deliverance finally. We're going to get justice. We're going to get equality. Finally, somebody cares. I mean, it was. We got our guy in the White House, right, finally. Right, right, but not just, not just black our people, guy. although oh, we were very well, excited. But I mean, other our people. Guy. Other black progressives, people who, who were tired of the, you know, the white male corporate structure, all the things that were wrong with America, Obama had all that riding on him. Only and he eight didn't years even, of Bush could have set this up. Right. And by the way, it was eight years yeah. of Bush that set, yeah, that set, yeah. that set people uh, towards yeah. Obama. By the way, the, But he's not running against Bush once he's won and in the White House. Right. <laughs> now, so that changed the day we got the past elected. Why? Right, but I Which think is that a peculiarity so many, of our system. There are many, many groups that supported Obama. And there were, of course, the, ex, those in the extreme left, the progressives, the whoever, but there were a lot of people in the middle. There were a lot of people who, the anti-Bush people who kind of sort of reluctantly voted for Obama, but they did, um, who, well, I don't know who if they voted, didn't but, give him a huge margin of error to begin with. But a lot with. of people just stayed home. They were even um, in the GOP. Yeah. They didn't vote. I mean, the, the voting turnout was very was way down. And I think that hurt the GOP too. In other words, among their base and their constituency, because well, they weren't sick excited about party. McCain. They weren't excited right. about McCain. Well, and, well, and then something else too. Mm. The the mistake, the second mistake of a lifetime that McCain made. He put this idiotic dingbat dumbbell woman. I'm sorry, that's what she was, and that's what she is on the ticket. <laughs> right. Because, and I say that not in a pejorative way, because that's the way she was seen by not the general public. But many in the GOP, the establishment, the traditional Reagan, Bush, old line conservatives, they turned off. Right. They shut down. And many of them endorsed Obama. Sure. I was fishing in Alaska with a Washington, D.C. anchorman named Jim Vance uh, shortly after she was joined the ticket. And we were asking Alaskans about this. They didn't even want her. They, no, they <laughs> were embarrassed they were, and, and they on been. behalf of the state, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was a bizarre uh, experience. But, not, but you know what? That that just that that was sort of not the beginning, but certainly the confirmation that that party was being controlled by not the not the the, the, the traditional re yeah. Republican power guys, but by the Tea Party, mm -hmm. and that's continued to mm -hmm. so, to the point where you know you mentioned earlier you normally candidates run to the right you know they run to the right and they come to the, center. the center. I see Mitt Romney going more and more to the right. I don't think there's any center there for him. Mm -hmm. So it'll so you know I think that. Uh, 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 I think we continue to see that uh, hap that happen. Look what happened with Richard Luger, the, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the last, uh, you know, adults so the in, process in the, in the is room. continuing. Yeah, sure, and, and he had very bitter things to say about the Tea Party. Well, let's. Uh, that brings us to the question: mm -hmm. 
Has there been a sea change as we're approaching the final, you know, the official lap mm -hmm. uh, of the race? And Romney is the candidate, and we know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen uh, Obama change. Uh, we've seen Romney continue to invest in what appears to be a, an erratic course of action. Um, Where's the electorate now? <laughs> Whoa. Are they still? It's a gigantic sad? question. Are yeah. they still? Or are they changing along with the candidates? Well, let, let me just take a, a, a shot at, I mean, it's such a broad, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't speak for the electorate, but how about if we walk back a little bit and just look once again, I've got to go back to these polls. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's okay. you know, I, I have to do it. <laughs> it's a it's given. It's science. It's science. Here's what we're looking at now. The election's still six months away. I think that the president has a defined base that's not going to change. And who are they? Obviously gays now. African Americans are still going to be off the charts for him no matter what. Latinos, significant majority. Um, environmentalists, off the charts for him. Uh, women, centrists, liberal, women, yeah. off the charts for him. Um, a huge percentage of the labor movement, too, the establishment. Who's left that, to vote against? No, 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 I'll tell you. Okay, that's his constituency. We move to the other side. I'll tell you who's, I'll tell you who's, who's left. You got a big, see, you're in Washington, we're in L.A., and I have to caution people all the time. There's a big America out there that's not just West Coast and East Coast. And, you know, there's a yeah, lot of folks that don't fly like us that are still in this box. You've got uh, the ultra-conservatives, Tea Party followers. You've got the, the Christian evangelicals. You've got uh, big, a big section of big business. You've got the Koch brothers, the Koch brothers. Okay, you've got yeah. all of them. And then you've got something else. Something else, um, uh, Bob and Aaron, that we have to look at. And this came out a couple of days ago in the vote in West Virginia, which the White House and many others took note of. You had a felon from Texas that put his name on the ballot in West Virginia and he, Democratic primary, mm -hmm. I'm talking about GOP, the Democratic primary got more votes than Obama. Now, you have now another ingredient. You ask what's left. I'll tell you what's left on the GOP side, anti-Obama. We don't know an undetermined percentage of Democrats, white conservative Democrats, unfortunately for the president, in some very key, those seven key swing states, that essentially have made it clear, we're not going to vote for this man. They made it clear, we're not going to vote for him because. no matter what. Because of race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else? That's always the X factor, not so X. Uh, all right, so Earl is saying this, this thing is not done by a long shot, no. and no. it's not moving in uh, Mr. Obama's favor. Uh, his, polls, as Earl goes, his polls, his, his own poll numbers are very volatile. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like uh, they change week to week. And so there's an instability about Obama's popularity or, you know, they mean, they mean nothing at this point. Final, they're meaningless at this point. Final, yeah. final question. Mm. How are you feeling about all this? The election? Mm. Or the election? Presidential policy? You don't have to make a okay. prediction. Just I, 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 where are we? I'm going I'm 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 to pick out something Earl said when he, when he was giving the list of, of um, the forces left to vote against Obama, <laughs> which are considerable. The Koch brothers. Um, but that just reminds me of how concerted this anti-Obama thing is very um, orchestrated. Mm -hmm. Lots of big money behind it. Mm -hmm. Huge money. Um, it's in the media, you know, and all conservative. And they're just getting started. They're just getting they're started. Just getting and who up. knows what they're going to do? Um, and there, and I think about also uh, the several states that that enacted uh, new voter registration laws, stuff like that. I'm glad you brought I that up. I think that actually the Justice Department went down to Texas, or has said that they're going to go down to Texas to monitor um, elections there because of you know they're not being entirely they haven't disclosed entirely why. But the point is, you know, I think that. The forces who do not want Obama in office, and you don't necessarily see them, they may not yeah. just be the electorate, are very organized, very well funded, you know. Well, but Aaron, you said something um, before, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, the old Nixonian silent majority, mm -hmm. and you know, you mentioned that kind of lightly, mm -hmm. but I think it's a good time maybe to go back on it. Mm -hmm. It is true. There is something to that silent majority. I've always had the sense that a big part of mid-America, certainly the South, we know that, yeah. and the heartland of America, mm -hmm. the hatred and loathing for this man is, oh, yeah. is I, I don't even think you, you even can feel it. I mean, right. it, it, it's just Gages. pulsating. Yeah, I agree. I, no, I, 
No, I, I meant what I said. I said no, hatred I, and loathing. No. I, I think yeah. it's Paul and, saying and fear. And but fear. no one publicly is going to say it. Well, many of them are saying it. Well, we are. But No, no, I mean many of them. Right. Oh, they're sure. They're trying to hide it. But then there's a, a significant, the polite segment of it that are not going to say it. Of course not. On this ominous note, <laughs> uh, let me remind you, we've got six uh, more months of a roller coaster ahead of us. And these folks are going to be here to help us through it. <laughs> Come back and see us again. Thanks a lot for watching.